Hello listeners. Mr. Bookman here. Before we get to today's story, subscribe to the channel and click the like button. You can now follow me on Facebook. The link is in the description. I just read that the average person spends 3 hours a day on their cell phones. Now everyone including you can use their cell phones to make 25 or even up to $50 an hour with social media jobs. No experience required to work your own hours from anywhere in the world. Click the link in the description to start making money right now. Now let's dive right into today's book. A Noble Dog by E. Nesbitt Coffee Brick Collection 29 Dogs This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Noble Dog Rover would go into the water fast enough for a bathe or a swim, but he would not bring anything out. The children used to throw in sticks, and Rover and I used to bound in together, but I would bring the stick back while he swam round and round enjoying himself. I am not vain but I could not help feeling how much superior I was to such a dog as Rover. He is a prized Newfoundland, and I am only a humble retriever of an obscure family. So one day I said to him, Why don't you fetch the sticks out when the children throw them in? I don't care about sticks, he said. But it's so grand and clever to be able to fetch them out. Is it? he answered. I know it is, for the children tell me so. Do they? he said. I wonder you are not ashamed, I went on, a little nettled by his meekness, never to do anything useful. I should be, if I were you. Ah, he said, but you see, you are not. Good night. We used to spend a great deal of time by the river. The children loved to play there, and we dogs were always expected to go with them. One day, as I was lying asleep on the warm grass by the river bank, I heard a splash. I jumped in, but there was no stick, only one of the children floating down on the river and screaming whenever her head came from under the water. I thought it was a new kind of game, not very interesting, so I swam out again, and just as I was shaking the water out of my ears, I heard another great flop, and there was Rover in the water, holding on to the child's dress. He pulled her out some ten yards down the stream, and, oh, if you could have seen the fuss that the master and mistress and the rest of the children made of that black and white spotted person. Why, Rover, I said afterwards when we had got home and were talking it over. Whatever made you think that the child wanted to be pulled out of the water? It's my business to pull people out of the water, he said. But, I urged. I always thought you were too stupid to understand things. Did you? he said, turning his mild eyes on me. Why didn't you explain to me that you... My dear dog, he said, I never think it worth while to fetch sticks out of the water, and I never think it worth while to explain things to stupid people. End of A Noble Dog This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Well, listeners, it looks like we have come to the end of the story. On your way out, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click on the link in the description if you want to start making money right now with social media jobs. Just know you are appreciated. Mr. Bookman is now signing off.